Hey, what's going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and today we are taking a look at the Inspiration Struck intro pack from Born of the Gods. This is, as you guys can see, blue-black, and as we have seen with our other intro packs from Born of the Gods and also from Theros as well, we are going to be opening this on up. We're going to take a look at the 60-card pre-made deck that we get inside, and we're also going to take a look at our randomized booster packs that we have, and we're going to try and make some changes here and do uh, do a little kind of exercise with swapping things out and finding better substitutes in terms of, like, basically just, like, commons and uncommons, and maybe even in the, uh, in the case of pulling, like, a rare that's in our colors, uh, what we would swap and... Uh, do in that given scenario. So we have our deck here. Uh, we have our booster packs neatly tucked inside as well. So we have our two booster packs of Born of the Gods, uh, which it's kind of weird that both of them have the same art, but uh, pretty much not really relevant to what we pull inside of them or anything like that. Uh, we also get two inserts here for how to play Magic, and we also get another one for the intro packs themselves. It talks about the deck list for the other intro packs. And uh, it gives you a little quick reference of what you are expected to get for your pre-made deck if you buy another one of the intro packs. Uh, but we're also taking a look at all the intro packs here on the channel. So uh, it's another first-hand resource for you guys to be able to take a look at them. So let's take a look at our blue and black deck here. And I actually have not looked at the deck list prior to this, so uh, I'll... Sharing the experience of taking a look at it for the first time, as it might be for some of you guys. So, uh, our first card is Arbiter of the Ideal. Uh, with these intro packs, you get one foil rare and one other regular rare. Um, and our foil rare, as you guys can see, is the Arbiter of the Ideal. Uh, we have a Triton Shore Thief, a Deepwater Hypnotist. We have two of those. Uh, Return Flanks. Two uh, shipwreck, uh, shipwreck Singer. We have Black Oak of Odunos, or of Odunos, a Felhide Minotaur, Servant of Timoret. We have a Siren of the Silent Song, which is actually probably like one of my favorite uncommons from the set, uh, from Born of the Gods. Uh, we have Airy Worshippers, Breaching Hippocamp, Forlorn Sudama. Insatiable Harpy, Sphinx's Disciple, War Chanter of Mogus, Horizon Scholar, and we have our basic lands, which we'll take a look at the the, uh, the land count here in a second, uh, just because every time I do these intro packs, I have a little spiel of how many lands you should be playing in certain decks. Uh, we have Springleaf Drum, Evanescent Intellect. Yeah, two of those. Uh, Retraction Helix, the two of. Siren Song Lear, or Lyre. Griptide. We have Oracle's Insight. Thassa's Bounty. Sip of Hemlock. And Curse of the Swine. That's our other rare that we get inside. Um, so it's kind of like a removal spell for us where we exile X amount of creatures and we essentially replace them with two, two green boar creature tokens. And. Uh, it's X amount of mana and double blue. So that's pretty sweet. Um, and then the land base. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 islands. And I want to say 11 swamps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. So a lot of, the, a lot of these decks have been coming with 26 lands. Uh, we probably want to be cutting it down to at least 25, if not 24. Um, just because we don't really need the 26th land in here. Um, 25 is perfectly acceptable whenever we're still playing cards like Arbiter. Uh, that is 6 mana. Um, and we have some high-end drops. But... Uh, 26 is usually just uh, a little bit excessive, so we can cut it down and we can make adjustments. Like if if you guys start um, cutting out big expensive cards and replacing them with cheaper cards, then you can make adjustments and uh, cut down maybe like the 24 lands or so. Um, but that's our uh, our 60 card pre-made deck. Uh, now let's take a look at our booster packs, our randomized cards, and see what we can pull out of here. Maybe any uh, blue or black cards that can improve our deck. So, uh, Griffin Dreamfinder, Nyxborn Eidolon, uh, Charging Badger, Fergax Giant, 
Sphinx's Disciple, a Crone Skyguard, uh, Claim of Erebos, Impetuous Sun Chaser, Fairy's Band Tromper, Deepwater Hypnotist, Unravel the Aether, Ashiox Adept, uh, Vortex Elemental, and we have Faded Return. So this is actually a very big high-end drop, uh, but it's in our colors. So it's an instant for 7 for generic and triple black. And we put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. It gains indestructible, and if it's our turn, we get to scry 2, which is nuts. Uh, then one mountain and a tip card. So we do actually have a, a little bit of things that are in our colors. So we'll see what makes the cut. And our second pack here. So we have a Forsaken Drifters at the top. So there's Forsaken Drifters, Revoke Existence, Nyxborn Wolf, Evanescent Intellect again, uh, Epiphany Storm, Cyclops of, of One Eye Pass, Necrobite, Sudden Storm, Kragma Butcher, Aspect of Hydra, Oracle's Insight, uh, Siren of the Silent Song, really sweet card, uh, Nessian Demoloch, and we have Scourge of Skull of Veil as our rare. So 0, zero for 3, Trample enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1s, and we can tap, sack another creature, and put a number of plus 1 plus 1s on our uh, Scourge, equal to the Sacrifice creature's toughness. So pretty interesting. Uh, not playable in our colors, but definitely an interesting card nonetheless. So we'll put that here. And we're going to take out our on-color cards and set that right back up on top. So uh, out of the things that we pulled out of our booster pack that are working in our colors, Siren is probably the one that I want to play the most in here. Uh, we also have Sudden Storm, which is really sweet. We get to tap up to uh, two target creatures. Those creatures aren't going to untap during their controller's next untap step. And we get to scry one. So that's pretty sweet. That's another card that's pretty good for this type of a deck um, for like beginners. Uh, Evanescent Intellect is another sweet card that lets you mill your opponent out. So uh, two, it gives Enchanted Creature um, t uh, two mana and tap. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her grave. So that's awesome. Um, it's going to interact with like Inspired, of course. Um, we have another Oracle's Insight, which may or may not be played, but it's another sweet card. I know we got some in our deck. Uh, Fated Return, I do really kind of want to play this card, but it's really, really expensive, so I don't even know if we're going to go around playing it. Um, Vortex Elemental is another sweet card, but I don't know how necessary it is for us. Uh, maybe we just want to be doing other things. Um, Ashiox Adept off of Heroic is going to force opponents to this card, which I'm um, not sure how much Heroic enabling we have going on. Deepwa Deepwater Hypnotist is a card that... Could be pretty awesome for us. Um, we may end up playing that. Uh, Claim of Erebos is something that I probably do want to play um, because it interacts with our inspired guys, which we'll get to in a second here. And Sphinx's Disciple is actually another card that's going to interact with our inspired and uh, tap cards as well. Um, and then Nyxborn Eilon may or may not be played, but uh, these cards are definitely things that I would like to try to put into this deck. So. Uh, things that I'm not really as excited about in this deck are probably Triton Shore Thief. It's just a one mana one two. Uh, nothing really special about it. Uh, Felhide Minotaur is another card. Um, it really doesn't do anything for us. Uh, Servant of Timeret, however, is probably one of my favorite cards for uh, this deck for a common. Because off of Inspired, uh, whenever it untaps, each opponent's going to lose one life and then we gain life equal to the life loss this way. And then off of that, we can use cards like Evanescent Intellect if we can't swing in with them and attack, or Claim of Erebos, so we deal, or we force our opponent to two, lose two life, and then they're going to lose another one whenever it becomes untapped, and then we gain one life. We just have all those kind of small interactions going on for us. So uh, it's a really sweet card, and I actually like it in here. Um, so we already have two cards that we're cutting out of here. Uh, other things... Uh, the Sudama is going to, off of Inspired, allow us to pay 3 and make a 2-2 two, two enchantment uh, black black enchantment zombie creature token. So uh, that's probably something that we could use towards like our 
cards like Evanescent Intellect and Claim of Erebos, so we can keep that. Insatiable Harpy is just fine. It's a flying lifeline creature. Uh, Swinx's Disciple plays off of Inspired. Basically, like, we're looking for Inspired creatures. War Chanter, however, doesn't really have an amazing Inspired effect, so I don't know if we'll keep him. Um, Horizon Scholar, whenever it enters the battlefield, let's describe. That's all right. Um, and we do have a little bit of ramping with, like, Springleaf Drum, where we can use our Inspired creatures for mana, um, or cre other creatures in general, but it uh, plays off of Inspired as well. Um, Siren Song Lear is going to allow us to uh, equip it onto a creature and we can pay two mana tap it and um, tap target creature again playing off of inspired so this is a pretty inspired heavy deck um, and then Thassa's Bounty, Sip of Hemlock, Oracle's Insight hmm so with the two cards that we took out already I definitely do want to play the Siren so now we have another Siren in here that's going to force our opponents to discard and mill as well. Um, and then probably probably go for another, like, Sphinx's Disciple, which is pretty fine. I did mention that we have, like, a ton of lands. We, we have 26 lands, so we can consider cutting out some stuff here as well. So we can cut out... We had a lot more islands than swamps, so we can cut out like an island to bring us down to 25, and then we have another slot that we can add in like Evanescent Intellect to play off of Inspired. So we we have uh, three Evanescent Intellects now. Uh, we do have we still have Oracle's Insight that lets us draw a card, so that's probably still fine. Um, maybe Thassa's Bounty is a little bit too greedy for the six mana or not greedy enough i should say um because it's six mana draw three cards and mill three i feel like we could probably do better than that and by doing better than that i mean playing something like claim of War uh, airbos instead of it so uh, we have that to force our opponent to lose life and we can play kind of like the slow grind game where we just try to win over the course of multiple turns um Otherwise, I don't really have a problem with any of the other stuff in here, really. Um, pretty much the rest of it's alright, actually. If you're going for like an inspired type of deck, maybe like War, Ch War Chanter. Uh, in instead of War Chanter, maybe play like Sudden Storm for stalling out games. The War Chanter is only a 3-3 three, three for 5 that gives Intimidate. We're not really going to be... Uh, dealing like a massive amount of damage to our creatures where we need to have them have intimidate or anything like that it's just it's not playing very well into our synergy in our deck um there are some instances where we can just kind of interact and like close out games but war chanter i feel is probably a little bit lacking so sudden storm i feel like will provide to be a little bit more useful in different scenarios where we get to tap two creatures with it and they can't untap during their next untap step um, so yeah, that's probably what I would do. Cut it down to 25 lands, uh, replace a few things here and there, but you guys are the final judgment for what you want to do if you actually purchase one of these decks. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, our, the rares that we pulled are Arbiter of the Un Ideal um, that comes with it. Uh, we also have Curse of the Swine as well. So that's the other rare that we get with it. So uh, we have two of these. I'm trying to remember what other rares we pulled. I know we pulled our uh, Scourge of Skull of Ale. So that's one of them. That's one of our rares out of our booster pack. And I'm trying to remember what the other rare was. Um, I'm honestly drawing a blank with it. So let's see. Oh, Faded Return. That's what it was. There we go. It was our big, huge... Uh, rare in black so that was the other rare that we got so again thank you guys for watching and until next time peace out if you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more magic the gathering content you can hit the subscribe button on the screen and you'll be notified whenever a new video is available and for those of you guys that enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh, you can check out my Yu-Gi-Oh channel by clicking on the video in the top right hand corner also be sure to check out our sponsors for the channel abu games and europe's mtg madness for all of your magic the gathering needs no matter where you are